you think Xenoblade is too much? With Xenoblade 3 very close to release, we are in an important moment for this series right now. We are seeing different takes in all different places about the series. Not only the core fandom is talking about Xenoblade right now, but a lot of other portals and sites all are reporting about Xenoblade. Just recently we had all the previews talking about the first hours of the game. And this is awesome, this is really interesting to see those different takes and those different opinions in the series, and it helps to get the world out about Xenoblade. Something that I noticed as a common topic in a lot of these reports, it's about the complexity of the series, how Xenoblade can get complicated. They talk about combat, they talk about an overwhelming amount of mechanics, an overwhelming amount of menus, a convoluted plot, in general just too much information on the screen all the time. They say that this is basically Xenoblade. And listen, I'm not going to deny that. I don't want to deny that. It doesn't make sense. Xenoblade actually is uh, a game that has a level of complexity. Even when compared to other JRPGs, I think Xenoblade is on a whole other level because this is not a turn-based JRPG. It is something different, completely different, and for a lot of people, it's something alien when they see for the first time. So that's the reason why they feel that way. So completely understandable to be overwhelmed by Xenoblade. However, when all the discourse is focused so much on how complicated it is, on how complex it is, I think we are missing a super important topic here. If it is so complicated, why fans are so passionate about it? Why there's a number of people who are completely in love with the series? I think it's super interesting to understand that and to see if it really is that hard to get into the series. Because before playing Xenoblade, I never played any JRPG. It was basically my first big JRPG that I played from the beginning to the end. And here I am now, completely in love with the series. I kinda understand the position of not being familiar with the series and kinda being afraid, because everyone is saying that the series is that big monster full of complexity. And I don't think it's exactly like that, even though it is complex. We see series, for example, like the Souls games. After Elden Ring that released right now, millions and millions of people are buying those games. And I think that Xenoblade has a lot of elements that can be universally praised, that a lot of people want to play, not only the specific niche that the series is close to. So I want to discuss in the video the appeal of the series, why people love it so much, why the complexity is kinda important for the series, and why maybe Xenoblade is not too much for you. Maybe you can give a chance to the series, if you like a good adventure, if you like everything that I'll mention in this video, maybe Xenoblade is for you too. Maybe you can give it a chance, you know? So I'll leave the decision to you at the end of the video. Right now, let's start talking about the series. Give her back! Yes! I told you to stay out of the way, boy! Choke! First, we need to talk about the story. Yes, Xenoblade is a game story driven and the story is super important, we have a lot of huge cutscenes during the game. And for a lot of people that's cool, right? A lot of AAA games right now are very focused on the story, and we don't see often that Nintendo games actually focus on story. So I like how Xenoblade actually fills that gap. I mean, from the top of my mind, the only ones that I can think of right now is Xenoblade, with a story heavy, and Fire Emblem. But even then, Xenoblade is super different. It's a different way to tell a story than Fire Emblem. It's a more linear story, I would say. It doesn't matter which one you play first. Feel free to start whatever. See from the trailers which one you like more and start with them. They have different worlds, they have different characters, so even if there's a connection here and there, you still get an amazing experience starting with one or with two. They are both very different, but I love them equally in different ways. I don't want to mention which one I prefer or something like that, because that's, that's a discourse that eventually you'll get into after playing both of them. But if you love a huge adventure with action, with romance, with comedy, with relatable characters and a deep lore, there's a lot to love here. You'll probably really enjoy the story in Xenoblade. To experience the story in Xenoblade, I think it's a little bit similar to watching a good series or to watching an anime, because it's not like a movie of two hours that you watch and it is completely closed. Xenoblade feels like a series with many episodes, so with 
With each chapter in the game, or each episode, you get to know more about the characters, about the world, about the stories, and it really takes their time to develop all the relationships and to develop all the characters and the points in the story, so everything can connect by the end. You get super connected to the characters and to the world. And not only the plot is amazing, but the scenes, the cutscenes in the game, inside the game, are super good. They are really fantastic, they are dynamic, well directed. Not only the action scenes, which are pretty good, they have amazing animation, they use a lot of motion capture in the most important scenes, but there's also some scenes of dialogue that really makes you a little more intimate with those characters, and I really like the way that they take their time to develop them and to show them with those amazing scenes where music, animation, and the voice acting all come together in a beautiful way. Hey, Mom? Dad, it's been a while. A ton happened, you know? I became a driver. And this girl is Pyra. My new partner. I know you'd love her. It's that kind of game that if you really enjoy those stories, you'll probably get really, really emotional. At least that was my case. So I think that's something that a lot of people enjoy. If you enjoy that kind of story, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, I think Xenoblade probably is for you. Because the way that they develop, the way that they execute the story is fantastic to watch. And I think that at the end of the day, the story is really what ties everything together. Because if you are not super invested with combat, if you find it super complicated, and the exploration also, you can always put the game on easy and enjoy in the way that you want, just watching all the scenes, just watching the story. I, I see myself a lot of times returning to the game just to see some of those scenes, because they are so memorable and so fun to watch. It, it really is a fantastic experience. But let's say that you want to put some efforts and to actually get to understand all the intricacies of the combat and Xenoblade. Listen, it's not a super monster, and if you actually understand the logic behind it, I think there's a huge chance that you love the combat in the series. It's something totally different from everything else, it is kind of inspired from MMORPGs, but even so, it's super different because it is adapted to a single player experience. I know that it looks super uninviting, because Xenoblade X was the first one that I played, and, you know, looking at this screen that you are seeing right now, I was super afraid of that. I couldn't understand anything that was going on. So I know how it is to see that and be kinda lost. But man, after learning everything, it is so, so good. For example, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I think it has the best combat in the series, because there's so many mechanics on top of each other, and then you see yourself doing a lot of damage to different enemies when you actually understand how everything connects and how everything works. But sadly, all of this is hidden behind a terrible tutorial, so I'm not gonna lie to you. To understand the combat, at least in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you have to watch some YouTube videos explaining it. It's not like you have to do a course and spend hours, but you have to at least see a video of a couple of minutes explaining how the combat works. Because sadly the game does not do a good work explaining that, and it is super fun. So it is kind of a shame that they managed to forget to put a good tutorial there. And I know that this sounds completely ridiculous to say that you should watch something outside of the game to actually understand how it works, but truly, I wouldn't say that if I hadn't had the time of my life playing with the combat of Xenoblade 2. And I know that a lot of people who manage to get the game and to understand the combat will always say the same thing to you. Uh, that the combat, when you understand the logic behind it, how it works, all the combos and etc., it really is super fun. And that's the same for Xenoblade 1 and Xenoblade X2. Both of them have kind of similar combats, but they kind of add different mechanics and the way it works is kind of different. But it is always super engaging because you are doing something all the time. And that's the bigger difference why I think Xenoblade is not a turn-based combat. Because I think they want this engagement for you all the time. And it works really well when everything comes together. I think for most of the time that you will be playing the game after the first couple of hours, you'll be having a lot of fun. But again, I completely understand if you don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. 
And hey, to be honest, the first time that I played Xenoblades, I think uh, the combat, it was really hard to understand, but what kept me playing was the story, as I said, because it was really good. And not only that, but in the beginning, the story was captivating, but the world was also amazing. Xenoblade is huge, like super huge. The scale is actually one of the main characteristics of the series, so that's really important that every time the Monolith Soft develops a new Xenoblade, they know that we are expecting to see those amazing worlds full of creativity. It's not like these games where you see the characters mentioning a big world, but you can actually just explore a linear path, like we see in a lot of JRPGs. No, every place in Xenoblades actually exists inside the game and you can actually explore. It's super fun and the world feels super alive because you are exploring and you are seeing all these different flora, you can see all these different monsters roaming around and there's no loading to actually start a battle. So the level of immersion that you get while you're playing is is amazing. I like to describe Xenoblade as being the perfect example of a modern JRPG. It takes every single one of the characteristics from those classic JRPGs on the NES, on the SNES, and it modernizes all of them. The way that they tell the story is super modern with amazing cutscenes, as I said. The way that they create the worlds, it really is a 3D world of amazing scale and it feels super alive with all these monsters. And the combat is super dynamic, it's super engaging, and a lot of the times it feels like a natural evolution of a turn-based combat, where you still have the strategy, but you have to think in real time. So, in general, it's just an experience that is super rewarding. The more you give to Xenoblades, the more Xenoblade will give to you. And everything is treated with the best that the technology that they have can offer. Zanza. Mekon! It's not over! The people of Bionis will never let you triumph! Well, I hope I was able to convey to you why this series is so beloved by a lot of people. I don't think Xenoblade is something from out of this world. Yeah, it has some menus that are weird, it has some convoluted stuff, but it's not like this ruined the whole experience. If you really like a big adventure, if you really like those open world games that, like Zelda for example, I think you should give a try to Xenoblade, just to see if maybe this is your thing, maybe you will enjoy the story, maybe you enjoy the exploration, because these are things that a lot of people enjoy in other AAA games. So why not Xenoblade? The game is not that alien. I meant to talk about the three pillars that I think are essential to a good Xenoblade experience. Combat, exploration and story. And I think these three pillars were great in Xenoblade 1, in Xenoblade 2, and they are looking to be fantastic in Xenoblade 3, with even better tutorials, with even better menus, and I hope that the series will be able to reach a wider audience. If you want to play 1 and 2 first, that's okay, you can do that. But if you want to start from 3, I, I'm gonna assume that this is probably okay. Tetsuya Takahashi, the director himself, said that it's okay to start with 3, so I think it doesn't matter where you start, but if you play all the 3 games, you eventually understand all the lore and enjoy the individual stories there are inside each one of them. So, to conclude, of course Xenoblade is not for everyone. It is a niche game. But I think this niche at the moment is really small and it can definitely reach a broader audience. So hey, give it a chance, alright? So now I'm curious to see your opinion. If you are a huge Xenoblade fan, feel free to leave a comment to talk about your experience with the series, and if you are still afraid to get into the series, feel free to leave a comment too so we can answer any question that you have about the series and maybe discover if Xenoblade is actually too much for you or it is something that you'll probably enjoy, alright? So that's it guys, until next time, bye!